What is up, you guys? Welcome back to wherever you're tuning in from. If you're watching the video, welcome back to my YouTube channel, you guys. If you are listening, welcome back to the FCB podcast. You guys, I'm wanting to do this on two channels because I know some of you guys like to listen and some of you guys like to watch, and that is okay. So you guys, today's video is raw and real or episode is raw and real. I really wanted to share kind of my my journey this last year of of quitting dieting, um, quitting in the sense of taking a break from restrictive eating behaviors. Really, I was in a really bad cycle of, um, of dieting. And I really, my relationship with food was not good. And so I really wanted to do this video in hopes to inspire all the women watching that are struggling with your relationship with food and with your relationship with your body, uh, with your relationship with yourself and in, in all, because that affects everything in your life. Our relationship with ourself is the most important relationship besides with our creator that we will ever have. And I say this all the time. And I really just want to inspire you to be able to change your story, to know that there is freedom on the other side of this, that you already have freedom. It's just knowing, you know, understanding the education about food, about what it takes, and about maybe just hearing somebody's story um, in order to give you the faith to do it. So I'm wanting to do this video or this episode to inspire you to get comfortable with just being you, to get comfortable at your relationship with your relationship with food, to break the norm of, of dieting. I think we have normalized being in a, being on a diet all the time. And I, and I want to unnormalize it. I want to normalize eating at maintenance. I want to normalize eating above maintenance and putting on muscle. I want to make that a normal for women to go back home again, to find your balance again with your body, with your nutrition, with yourself and feel good and start writing that new chapter, start living that new chapter and stop living in these old chapters and these unhealthy patterns, because that's where I was with this. And that is how the whole year started. And I'm going to start by telling you, you know, I, I was struggling. I've been in and out of competing on competitions and, you know, I knew the science. I, I have my nutrition education. And in the beginning, you know, each year I would learn a little bit more. So I don't want to disregard how I coached and how I trained and what I did because that I did what I knew. And I did with, I did with what the information I was learning at the time. However, I still had a distorted view of my body and my image because of the way that I grew up and the, the, the emphasis I put on, you know, my appearance. And it was a mask for a lot of years and my identity was wrapped in what people thought of me. My identity was wrapped in people pleasing. And that is a whole other story for another time. That's just the way I grew up. It's the way I I felt like I could control people to love me or like me. And I was so hung up on, you know, outward validation. And if you followed my bi journey, my breast implant journey, um, I talk about a lot of that, my identity being wrapped up in my appearance. And so I knew that this was the other part of it. I, you know, it's funny because it's been four, four and a half years since I've had my implants out. But I thought a year ago, I thought, oh God, we're doing this again. You know, we're, we're okay. Like, I feel like I'm back here at this place again. But it's funny how things will unravel. And if you press into those things, when you know that something is wrestling within you that needs to change and you allow God to change that within you, everything changes. And so I allowed that because I was feeling something was feeling off. I wanted to start this transformation. I wanted to vlog, but I didn't realize my intentions were not pure. My intentions, again, were back to the competing and back to the outward appearance and back to if I could look a certain way, then I will help more women or I will, but it just, I don't even know if this makes sense, but I, I, the way the, the patterns unraveled so fast, it's like they got worse. And so I come from a background of addiction. 
you know, I'm 12, 12 months, 12 years, going on 13 years clean and sober from drugs and alcohol. Thank you, Jesus. Um, but throughout that whole time, you know, it wasn't the drugs and the alcohol that were the problem. There was all these other problems that caused me to lean on those, right? It was a, my identity. It was um, all this trauma. And so even with my relationship with my body, it was like this whole other part started to unravel. First, I had to remove the implants and then stop the Botox. And now, okay, now, God, you're working on me with not being so obsessive about food and, and dealing with this disordered eating and this body dysmorphia. So I knew I had to go on this journey. And I knew in my heart that I had to break free of the fear of food. Why the hell was I fearing food? Why did it have so much power over me? Why did I obsess all the time about food? Am I eating too much? Am I eating too little? Do I need to burn this off? I got to work out. Like it felt like it freaking consumed my life. It felt like chains. I felt like I had no control. I felt like, you know, but it was a thing that I tried to control. And so I knew that I had to go on this journey and I, and I had to coax myself. I said, okay, eight weeks, I'm going to do a build. I'm going to do something that scares me. And still it was like, still, okay, if I do a build, this better than maintenance because maintenance, I feel like I'm not doing anything with a build. I still had to do these things, right? So, you know, I said, eight weeks, I'm going to do this build and, I, and I'm going to vlog my journey and, you know, going into a gung ho. And, you know, what? there was a whole other plan for this. And I think I'm so grateful because 12 months later, ladies, and I'm just finishing build maintenance. So I did build and then I went to maintenance and then I did a build. And so I want to share with you guys, I want to share with you the things that I've learned. And if you have any questions, you can pop them below this video. You can ask, you can email me, you can follow me on social media. But I'm going to share the things that I've learned in hopes that maybe one of these things will be the key to set you free. Not in hopes. I know. I know. So you guys are watching this. All you ladies watching this, maybe guys, but probably ladies, um, that you're watching this for a reason. That there's something in the season you're in that, that needs healing. And so let's talk. Let's talk. So I did this build, you guys. I'm going to just state the facts over um, before I kind of get into it. And hopefully I am going to say everything that I need to. I'm just, you know, have faith, trusting God, that I will remember the things that need to be said. And I don't have to redo this video 50,000 times. <laughs> okay. I want to keep this quick, short, and sweet. All right. I did the build, you guys. And I told myself eight weeks. And then it became six months, a part of me. And then it became eight months. And then I made it to 12 months. So within that first build, I did six months of a strict build. Throughout that build, I tried to veer off. I went to carb cycling, only lasted three days. I tried to cut calories. Again, it only lasted three days. So this didn't happen all at once. The first, the first, um, probably the first month I felt great on the build. However, I want to say Ladies, that just like a deficit, a build is just as hard. You think that it's going to be so amazing, especially us that have been chronic dieters. And I'm not even going to say we've been in a deficit. We've just been chronic dieters because we were in a restrictive binge cycle. Restrict binge, restrict binge. That's what I was in. So I thought, oh, I get to eat all this food. This is going to be great. So knowing me, I went from, you know, um, being in this restrictive binge cycle. So I didn't really know my total amount of calories over seven days that it was consuming because I was quote unquote consuming, you know, 16, 1500 calories a day. However, I would binge. I would, you know, have bites, licks, tastes, handfuls, whatever at night, sometimes on the weekend eat way more. So it could have been a averaging out way more than that up to my maintenance, right? Um, I will not lose my train of thought. You guys, this raw and real video, I'm not editing it. So um, and so, and so with the build, I jumped right up to 2,600 calories because that's what my, my macro ratios for a build for my body weight, everything said that it should be. That's what a build would be. That was on the higher end. I think that was a 15%, 15 or 20% build that's over my maintenance. Okay. And so the first couple of days I felt great. My workouts were great. I felt amazing. Third day still felt good. Fourth day, oh, that food was getting dreadful. Let me tell you what I experienced. 
experienced that for sure. I wasn't eating enough because I was eating and I was, you guys, I was, I was still doing the same habits. And I'll talk about that later, but I was still tracking my macros in this build. So I was still making sure I was getting those whole foods, those carbs. And in the beginning, I didn't realize that, well, I realized right quick that I needed to choose wisely with my carbohydrates, more calorie dense, less volume. I was still trying to eat those salads and like tons of veggies, which are good. But when you're on a build, it gets like a lot of volume and you cannot keep up all that food and hit those calories still. So, um, you know, by that fourth day, you know, I had no sugar cravings. I had no binge issues. I was done by dinner time. I wasn't hungry. It was a for, it was like force feeding your child to eat food. That's what I felt like. I thought, how can I keep this up? But we made it through. I even got COVID through the thing and like got nausea and I still had to make myself eat. That was the hardest. That was the hardest thing. That was the most challenging because it lasted like three months for me. This like pregnancy nausea. Um, but I kept at it. And like I said, I veered off a few times um, wanting to get lean again. Um, but the cool thing is within eight, within eight weeks, I gained about five pounds. I've gained 10 pounds total. You guys, 10 pounds, I'm only five, two. So on my frame, that's a lot of weight. I went from about 130, and I'm one sitting at 140. Um, and I promised myself that I would not diet. I would not diet or go on a deficit. Sorry, I don't want to say diet. I would not try to cut fat or whatever until I successfully finished 12 months of being consistent in a build and or at maintenance. And so I tried to veer off a couple of times, but I course corrected within a couple of days, uh, three days. Sometimes my husband would notice right away. He's like, are you trying to diet? Your personality, your moods are changing. I'm like, yeah, okay, no, I committed to this. I have to stick it out. Okay, so let's go. I have my journal, you guys, my notes. So don't mind me if I have a little bit of brain stalls here, but I want to share kind of things that I really realized. So one of the first things that I realized, ladies, even at eating at maintenance, that I had a really unhealthy relationship with food while well, I knew that. But I didn't realize how much I was restricting during the day and even during the week. So some of you that are like, well, I'm I'm eating so many calories and I'm not losing weight. And um, or maybe you do for a bit and then you don't, and you just seem to always you've never eaten at maintenance and you've never, God forbid, you would never try a build because you don't want to lose weight. Like that tr terrifies you. One, if you feel terrified about gaining weight or even putting muscle on. That's a sign you need to conquer that fear. And the only way to conquer that fear is to stare that fear in the face and go after it. Um, so that's what I did. I went after, I knew I was, I had this weird relationship with food. So you know what? The best way to, way to break the fear is to, to do what science says. And like, I'm going to go into a build. I'm going to see what weight I can put on. I'm going to do it the right way. I'm going to track still. I'm going to still lift weights and I'm going to try to put on muscle and I'm going to see how hard it is. And it is hard to put weight on because your body naturally wants to go back to maintenance every single time, even in a surplus. Like I said, I was starting to feel full. Your body has two hormones. Um, two of the hormones that control hunger and satiation are called ghrelin and leptin. And when you're when you're eating in a surplus and you're 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 at a set you are um, at your weight set point, your leptin will increase and it will say you'll feel satiated after every meal. You won't. It will be really hard to overeat. Um, and so I was experiencing this, so it was really hard to constantly making sure I'm eating over my maintenance because I was like, you know what, I won't track this or whatever, but I had to keep tracking. I'm like, really, I have to eat that? You do. And so it's just as hard as a deficit. A deficit, your adrenaline kicks in after a certain point. After you lose a few pounds, your adrenaline will start kicking in. You'll start not wanting to move as much. So then your BMI and your NEAT levels lower. So then the deficit shrinks. And so, and then your adrenaline kicks up. So then you get a bit more hungry. I talk about this on my podcast. I won't go into this, but, um, and then it gets hard to want to stay in the deficit, right? So it's the same thing with a build. So I was experiencing this for about six months. So after six months, um, you know, I, again, tried to veer off and tried to diet, but I decided, you know, what? I'm just going to do maintenance. How about I just hang out at maintenance and still do the same habits? And I'm just going to track 
my food for maintenance. So I did that pretty much all summer, right up until uh, the end of September. And then I went back into a bill and I started eating more. And again, I started putting on a little bit more weight and muscle. Um, but that was the biggest thing, you guys, that I noticed was it wasn't as scary as I thought it was going to be. I didn't gain as much weight as I thought I would. I didn't realize how actually hard it was to put weight on if you are trying to put the right weight on, like muscle versus just overeating and putting excess fat on, right? I was training. I was tracking. I was getting the right amount of sleep. Um, I was trying to keep that room for flexibility. 80% of my food was whole foods. However, I had to pick more calorie dense foods because I couldn't eat the high fibers volume foods because they were lower in calories. So I had to eat way more and I couldn't eat that many calories. So I needed to choose things more calorie dense. So pastas, certain breads, which I loved, I'd have like four pieces of sourdough bread after a workout and a protein shake, sometimes a smoothie. Um, I could eat bagels. I ate lots of pasta with my girls, like brown rice pastas and sauces. And I had more freedom and flexibility, but I still tried to keep more you know, 80% whole food, 20% soul food. So I still allowed myself chocolate and, you know, some like ice cream bars in the summer and things like that. However, one thing that I noticed in the beginning, I was a little bit more, we'd go out for dinners and I'd have burger and the fries, you know? So I noticed that start to not make me feel good. Even though I was, I was allowed that room for those calories, I noticed it affected my training. So something I never experienced before was like, you know, um, the guilt of eating something like that. But now it wasn't the guilt because I, I was allowed to have those calories. It was more, I was more in tune with my body and listening like, holy, like I get night sweats from this. Um, my training is shit. I, I my get constipated. I get zits. My hormones are more out of whack. So as the transition happened, you guys, I started to get more smarter with my food choices because I wasn't choosing them because they were like diet foods or lower calorie or better choices or cleaner foods, all these food labels that we put on. I was choosing them because how they made me feel the energy that I got from them, the, the, my sleep, my energy levels, my, uh, my PMS symptoms, my hormone cycles were a lot better. So these are things that I had transitioned throughout. In the beginning, I was more free. I probably had more, you know, more 30% soul food, maybe, maybe even 50 sometimes. And then that whole food, I still tracked, I still stayed within my allowances. Um, but I found it was easier to hit my calories, especially if they're higher. If I had more of those yummy, higher calorie, higher fat foods, but I didn't feel as good. So later on, I started to just get smarter with researching what are the better options and food choices. Um, and so you guys, um, I'm just going to look at my notes quickly. Bear with me. Yeah. So like I said, I still practice the habits. Um, that I normally would practice. So another tip, when you go into a build or maintenance, you're not just letting everything go. You're still doing the same disciplines as you would if you were, let's say, wanting to be in a deficit or cut fat. You're still wanting to, you know, move your body every day, especially lift weights. You're still wanting to, you know, drink your water. You're still wanting to hit your macros and track your food or follow a meal guide or making sure that you are still getting those nutrients in, you still want to practice that. You still want to do your daily mindset work. You still want to set daily goals and go over your wins and have your non-negotiables. Those are important for you. Those are important for growth. And I think a lot of the time we think, okay, the only time we pay attention to those is if we're in a deficit. No, no, no. Those are things that should guide you. That is your, that is your foundation. That is the place of home. And that should be practiced even if you're just at maintenance calories and practicing um, intuitive eating, right? And I realized another thing, I couldn't intuitively eat until I knew what my food was being in a deficit, being in a surplus and really knowing what my what made me feel satiated, right? And knowing that I needed certain macronutrients at each meal. So that's kind of what I learned about my body, learning to listen to those hunger cues, satiation cues, um, learning that when, you know, I'm I'm in a surplus that I have to 
find better, you know, I don't want to feel bloated all the time. So I had to find more calorie dense foods and being in a deficit, knowing I had to find higher volume foods because you're a little bit more hungry and, and at maintenance, learning to intuitively eat, stop when you're full, eat more if you're hungry and things like that. Um, something else that I learned too, is that even when I was quote unquote dieting, I wasn't actually in a deficit because I had such a restrict binge cycle. I think I touched on this already, but it's super important to realize that if you live your life like this, it's so not healthy. If it's so not healthy for your relationship with yourself, it's not healthy for the people around you watching you. It's just so destructive. It's destructive for your mental health. It's destructive for, you know, your, your, um, your self-esteem. So, um, one of my tips too, is if you find, if you find yourself in this cycle, ladies, that dieting more, harder, exercising more is not going to fix it. It's just not. It it sucks sometimes because sometimes you're like, wow, I have to start back from ground zero. And ground zero, I always say come home. And come home is your maintenance. And still practice those disciplines. But maybe right now being in a deficit isn't good for you. And being able to recognize that and going, okay, I am not what my body looks like. I am more than the body fat on my body. I'm more than the amount of muscle I have. I'm more than what, you know, I think that I need to look like. I am more than that. And learning to embrace who you are and learning to still practice the disciplines, no matter if you're trying to lose or not. I think that was another thing that was really awkward for me when I went to maintenance was still doing the workouts and showing up and giving it my all and still eating at maintenance without having this fat loss goal. It was like bizarre to me. It was such a weird, um, weird feeling. Um, but each day it got easier and easier and easier. Um, each day it got easier. And, and the, like, like they say, practice makes progress. So you have to practice, you know, um, those non-negotiables. You have to practice those disciplines that you would apply even in a deficit, the mindset stuff, you have to practice changing your internal dialogue, the way you speak about yourself. You know, this was really hard for me in the beginning. I'm not going to lie. It was, it was learning to love my body where it's at, you know, and this is something that I I've learned and I shared at our event that we had, and I'm going to share with you in order to have the body you want, you must first learn to love the body you have where it's at. And some of you may be like, whoa, 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 Hannah. But you know what? You don't have 30 or 40 or 50 pounds to lose. Like I'm clinically obese or whatever. But here's the thing. If you don't practice the habits now, a diet pill is not going to fix it. Uh, surgery is not going to fix it. Plastic surgery is not going to fix it. Like, um, you know, whatever, liposuction, it's not going to fix it. It's just going to make it worse. It's just feeding into the lie that there's a quick fix and you don't need to work with it, what's going on in here because it's what's going on in here that's affecting what's out here. It's affecting the way you speak. It's affecting your habits and your behaviors. First, you got to practice the daily disciplines in order to get the results. You don't, you don't, you don't deserve the results if you can't do the daily habits. It's not about the goal ladies. The goal, there's always going to be a new goal. Don't get married to the outcome. You got to learn to create the habits because the habits are the vehicle that are going to get you to the outcome. So you got to ask yourself, what kind of habits do you want to create? Because I know for me personally, even throughout my competing career, Phase, <laughs> that, you know, I may have been doing the disciplines, but I was creating some really bad habits, using laxatives to relieve my bloating, to get rid of the binge, disordered behaviors, doing all these things, drinking extra water, taking diuretics, whatever I could to get the weight to go down because I was addicted to the outcome. but the habits were destructive. 
So this was something throughout this whole year that I felt like, oh, I could feel this pull, but I had to break it. And I had to remind myself in order to have the body that I dream of. And not just physical, ladies, the health, the vitality, the energy, the confidence, the strength. I want to be strong. I want to feel good in my clothes. I wanted to feel vibrant. I wanted to feel making sure my mic is still going. I wanted to feel all these things, but I knew the habits I have were, weren't going to take me there. So I had to be making sure that I had to love the body I have right now, even if it's not the way I want it to look that I had to break free from trying to change the outside and work on the inside. So these are things that I had to learn to focus on. And I hope I'm not forgetting you guys. If you have questions, feel free to email me, ask below the video. Um, but these are things that I had to focus on. I had to focus on non-scale victories. I had to focus on what was I doing in the gym? And something, it's going to sound really weird, but something that I would constantly um, ask myself when I was working out, okay, if it was a life or death situation, am I training hard enough that I'm actually getting stronger physically and not just burning myself out? Okay, all my over-exercisers hit addictive women that are listening here. I used to be one of those, all for the sweating, all for the exhausting yourself to the point of you can't do anything else during the day. You're irritable with your family because you've exhausted yourself. Well, that's not going to save you if the world was ending or something was happening. Are you training in such a way that it's making you stronger and better? And I mean, sometimes that means not training. Sometimes that means doing some mobility. Sometimes that means taking a rest day. Sometimes that just means going for a walk and like going over, like um, reflecting on yourself. Sometimes that just means you know, really evaluating everything that you're doing. Is this making you better, stronger, spiritually, physically, mentally? You have to constantly reflect and ask yourself those things. Okay, so the next thing that you have to focus on is, is practicing the same habits. Like I said, I went over that. I won't go over that again. The same habits, you know, maybe it's setting a step goal, movement goal, uh, doing your workouts being committed to the days that you set to do your workouts. Maybe it's taking some time, days off because you're an over-exerciser. You recognize that. So, okay, I'm going to train these, these three or four days. I'm going to give it my all and that is it. And then I'm going to rest and focus on my nutrition and, and nourishing my body with foods that actually give me energy. Okay, practicing that 80-20 rule. Maybe you're an extremist and you are, you know, all or nothing. I won't even say all or nothing. You're restrictive and binging. So you, you know, try to eat, clean, 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 and whatever you think it is, or no junk food, no sugar, you even take out fruit to just binge on the weekend. So maybe you have to practice that 80-20 rule, 80% 80 of that whole food, allow yourself that chocolate, allow yourself that latte, allow yourself that piece of licorice if your kid is having a piece of candy. It's okay. Allowing to practice that flexibility within that discipline right within within that balance because balance requires boundaries but boundaries also require discipline but it doesn't mean you create these rigid walls around it, it's there's still room for flexibility within those boundaries it's finding what that is for you right the next thing still check in with yourself just because you're in a build or in a maintenance or breaking free from from chronic um from chronic dieting cycles, I want to say that you're dieting, just the binge restrictive cycles, is just checking in with yourself. It doesn't mean you need to take pictures. It doesn't mean you even need to take measurements or your weight. Those are good things that you could still do, but if they're triggers for you, you don't have to. But it means going over, like uh, in the FCB platform, um, every week you get to do a check-in. And in that check-in, there's a questionnaire. So it goes, how is, so it's a one to 10. So how is my energy from a one to 10? And I always say to the women and I do your check-ins, I respond to all the check-ins. I say, you know, you want to at least be 80% or higher. And if you're not, we've got to go over why, why is this area? So this is important. How's your energy from one to 10? How's your training performance from one to 10? How's your nutrition adherence from one to 10? How is your confidence from a one to 10? How is your physique looking from a one to 10? How is um, your sleep from a one to 10, these are all factors that we got to go, okay, if one of these is lacking, why? Why? And we 
focus on those because those end up being our non-negotiables. Those are the things that we do daily, create those habits that create the outcome that we want. So keep checking in with yourself, okay? And the next thing you need to focus on throughout this period that I focused on, sorry, not that you need to, but that I focused on, um, was non-scale victories um, and wins. And I think I, I might have just said this at the beginning, but just focusing on performance goals, focusing on, you know, um, hitting those non-negotiables daily. Like, you know, did I go for a walk? How did it feel? Did I read a book? Did I honor that I was taking a rest day and didn't try to over-exercise? Did I honor that I, I allowed myself with that flexibility? Like, focusing on those wins, you know, like, did I go for a walk with a friend instead of doing my workout because that gave my soul joy, like focusing on those will make a big difference. Um, again, practicing, you know, changing your inner dialogue, your morning routine, gratitude will change everything, right? Anchor statements, anchor statements have been amazing for me, whether that's scripture for you, a Pinterest quote, whatever that is, one of my favorite anchor statements this year has been, um, Everything has a way of working itself out as long as I keep taking consistent action forward. That for me, just, it just, it made the anxiety go away. I saw everything's going to work out. Everything has a way of working itself out. I just got to keep moving forward and trust the process. Um, and that was another thing, trusting the process. Again, that could be an anchor statement, but that was something I had to constantly remind myself, trust the process. That if I felt called in my heart, like this was the right thing to do because the other thing was, was um, unhealthy, that this way is healthy. And that I had to trust the process that I, I didn't have to worry about the outcome, that I couldn't get obsessed with the outcome, that I had to just focus on the things that I was doing daily. Were they giving me life? Were the thoughts I was thinking moving me towards the person I want to be, or were they destructive? Was the things I was doing daily moving me towards the person I want to be or destructive and course correct? And this was daily. This was a lot of work. Another thing that I focused on was having a support system. So I have an amazing husband and family that are so supportive, but I have an amazing community, the FCB community of women that you know what? Sometimes when I would be feeling low and down, we do um, mindset coaching every single Friday and just sometimes lifting them up would lift me up. It's amazing when you feel down or depressed or anxious, if you go and help someone or give them a word, how it encourages you too. It can almost encourage you more than like, than, you know, someone else encouraging you or just doing nothing or sulking in it. So um, having a support system, I focused on my support system which was my community, which was my husband, my children. Um, the next thing I focused on was that there was going to be freedom on the other side of this. That, you know what, it won't be like this forever. That this too shall pass. And I had to focus on that. And it was crazy, the freedom. And I remember telling one of our ambassadors and, and really good friends, um, her name's Janelle. I hope she doesn't mind that I used her name in here. That, you know, I was telling her, I have so much food freedom. I never thought I would be in a place of not being afraid of food because, you know, I knew the science, but I still doubted it. I knew the things were what I was learning, all the education I had, but I still doubted. I didn't trust my body. I didn't trust myself. So I started building trust with myself and started building food freedom. And I could eat, I can eat whatever I want now. I can eat whatever, even in a deficit, if I'm at maintenance, if I'm at, if I'm in a build, it doesn't matter what I eat. It's just literally the serving sizes. That's it. I can eat anything and everything and nothing is going to make me overweight and nothing is going to be magically make me lose weight, no food group. It was the habits that I practiced daily. It was being consistent with knowing what my body needed. It was understanding that I wouldn't have to track my food forever. That I wouldn't have to be in this place forever. But in order to get out of it, I had to do this. And there was freedom. There, there was absolute freedom. And so you know, um, I had to focus on making gratitude and, and 
thankfulness towards my body a practice every day. So what do I mean by that? And you guys, this changed my, this, this is something I just started in the last probably three months was it when I'm in the shower, if I get that anxiety or I see myself in the mirror and we all do it, ladies, one thought, one cellulite, one stretch mark, whatever it could be, one jiggle, feeling bloated, whatever it is. I know, you know, okay. Um, I would catch myself. And then when I got in the shower, you know, I would pray something that I want to share with you and what, whatever you believe, but this is something that has helped me. So feel free to take this on if you want, what, whatever, but something that when I got my breast implants removed, and stopped getting Botox. I really struggled. I really struggled with seeing lines on my face. I really struggled. It was a dysmorphia. It is, it's a blindness. It's a, it's a thing that you have to break free from. And it's so scary. Um, so what I would find myself doing if I started thinking like a really negative thought and it was giving me anxiety about my body or the way I looked, I would say, I'd close my eyes and I'd say, God, remove the distorted mirrors from my eyes and remove the distorted mirrors from my mind. It's amazing what I saw after. I didn't see what I was seeing before. So feel free to take that. And that's what I'd say when I'd be getting that anxiety. So, you know, for all of you that are watching that have never struggled with an eating disorder or body dysmorphia, you're like, Hannah, this is way out. I'm sorry. But for those of you that do, you know. So feel free to take that. So back to the shower story. So in the shower... I would literally breathe and I would say, thank you, God, for all my senses. I thank you that I have these eyes to see my children, to see the beauty. I thank you, God, that I have the ability to encourage others with my voice, including myself. Thank you that I can speak into myself. Thank you that I have ears to hear laughter and to hear praises and to hear my children's voices and, and to just listen to nature. Thank you. Thank you, God, that I have these hands, these hands that allow me to grip and to hold and to hug and to praise. Thank you, God, because I don't know what I would do if I couldn't grab my babies and hold their hands or even grab a pair of weights and be able to have the ability to lift weights. So thank you, God, and forgive me. Forgive me for ever getting so consumed with about pinching my fat on my body because at the end of the day, if I lost my hands, I wouldn't give a crap about a roll on my tummy. I would just want those hands to grab and to hold and to hug and thank you for these legs. And yes, they may not be as skinny as I want them to be, but guess what? They get me up. I can run. I can play. I can, I can squat. I can move. I can do anything I want. I am free. And the more I practice this, and, and not even that, thank you, heart, that you beat. Thank you, lungs, that you allow me to breathe. Thank you for all of these things going on within my body, my immune system, my digestive system. Thank you for working. That I don't have to tell you to do these things. How petty is it that I get so obsessed with a weight that I need to be in, a shape that I need to look at, because the media has conditioned me to want to look a certain way. Hell! You know, who told us we need to be a certain size or have a six pack or be see every single muscle? Who made that the ideal? Why is that the ideal? I'm getting, oh girl, woo, I'm getting passionate about who made that the ideal? You know, we have all these magazines. We have oxygen, we have strong, we have shape. We have all these preaching, you know, body confidence. But yet the only bodies that I see on there are ripped muscles. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I think it's amazing. There's nothing wrong with having that as an, a desire, which I do. But there's nothing wrong with you if you don't have that body shape. That you are beautiful just the way you are. And I had to remind myself of this every day. That I'm not my body fat percentage. That I'm not my weight. That at the end of the day, those don't matter to the people that matter to me. That's the most unimportant thing. That if I lost my voice to encourage you today, I would kick myself for being so obsessed with a certain look for so long. Never forget the blessing and the freedom you have. When you start saying gratitude, it's like literally chains start breaking off. And this is something that I experienced. And I don't know if this was everything that I was supposed to say. And I know this is 40 minutes. 
but I know the person that needs to hear this listening. And if it's one, well, God, thank you that this one person is listening to this now. And I have a few more lines before we go. Okay. <laughs> Trying to read my notes. Okay. Just practice loving yourself. Practice being your best friend. Practice staring at yourself in the mirror like she was your best friend. You know what even helps? Putting a picture of you when you were a little girl. And anytime you feel like ripping her, ripping yourself apart, look at her. You're doing it to her. That's another practice I learned. But practice being your biggest cheerleader. Just where you're at now, accepting where you're at now, breaking free. There is freedom on the other side of this. Just know this is a process and the process is going to require you to trust it. Your body requires you to trust it. Your body requires you to build it up and to love it because it's saying, girl, tell me, tell me, tell me how beautiful I am. Tell me what I'm good at. Don't leave me hanging. Tell, tell me because that is the fuel. Don't beat me up anymore. I, I can't hear that I'm not good enough. I can't hear that I have another stretch mark and that that's what you hate about me. Don't tell me what you hate about me. Tell me what you love about me. What do you love about me? What am I good at? And so when we practice those daily things, our daily wins, our gratitude, our body positivity, thanking every sense and every the ability to smell and all of those things, we're saying, body, you are amazing. And guess what? Just like water makes water and sun makes a flower in a garden blossom. So your words act like sunshine and rain to your self-esteem in your soul. Remember that just like weeds can suffocate a garden and take it down and overgrow really fast, so can your thoughts and your words if they are the, not feeding the person you want to be. So be careful of that. Think about the word, the weeds and the sun and the rain. What are what what do what do you want to see grow? Do you want to see a garden or do you want to suffocate it? And you will blossom and you will grow into the woman that you've always wanted to be because guess what, girl? I'm going to finish off with this. That your dream body, your dream health, your dream, whatever that is that you want to be, you wouldn't have it if you weren't already it. You've just been blinded. You're just blind. We got to remove the distorted mirrors. We got to remove the distortion. The only way to do that is to break free. And the only way to break free is to go into the thing that we're most afraid of. Because fear is an illusion. What you think is going to happen won't. Something beautiful is on the other side of that. It's like the monster at the level trying to keep you from going to the next level because that level is a level higher. It's the level you want to be at. So fear will stare you in the face and you got to stare it back in the face and go, uh-uh, there's nothing here. I got to move. I got to grow. I can't stay stuck. I can't go in another cycle. This is not working for me. I've been here for too long. Another diet's not going to do it. Restricting more calories, working out hard is not going to do it. I can't keep doing the same old thing and thinking I'm going to get a different result. I got to do something different, even if that something scares you. You guys... That is it. That's all. I know this was really long today. It's not even what I planned to say. I was going to go on to all this teaching and topics and stuff, and I didn't. So hopefully that's what you needed to hear today. I love you all. Don't forget to leave a comment below this. I'm going to enter everybody in that comments below this. If you have questions or just if this red resonated with you, whatever resonated with you most, you can comment below. And I'm going to enter your name into a draw. So make sure you put your email there. You are going to win three months of the FCB app. We have app launching. You guys, it's a game changer. You'll get to be a part of our community. So if this is something that you want to be a part of, just put your email 
below this video um, and just uh, put your whatever resonated with you most. Um, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Make sure to su subscribe if you haven't and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. I love you all. You are amazing. And just remember, you got this. It's already in you. There's nothing to be afraid of. Bye, you guys.